Hi everyone. Today we are going to talk about serotonin modulators. So this is a group of medicine that is relatively new. Uh, so I'm going to start with a high yield question for PRITE in board exams that can also help open our discussion today. So question number one. What is the most common comorbidity with depressive disorders? And the answer is anxiety disorders. In fact, 59% of patients who are suffering from depressive disorders also have some sort of anxiety comorbidity. So if that's the case, how, how are we going to treat it? Can you think of a new medication that uh, can be used for treatment of depression with comorbid anxiety? And the answer to that one is Vilazodone aka Vibrid. So how does Vilazodone work? This is the mechanism of action of Vilazodone. It's a serotonin reuptake inhibitor and at the same time it's a 5-HD1A partial agonist. Now can you think of another medication that is also 5-HD1A partial agonist? Yes, buspirone. So the way I like to think of Vilazodone is that it's a SSRI plus a buspirone, but in one pill. So that's how I like to think about it. Now, keep in mind that Vilazodone is FDA approved only for MDD, uh, but because of its mechanism of action, it can also be used in the treatment of uh, comorbid anxiety. Okay. Now, question number Three. Name a medication for a depression that can also improve cognitive function independent of its antidepressant effects. And the answer to that question is vortioxetine. Now, how does vortioxetine, aka Trentalix, work? This is the mechanism of action of vortioxetine. It's a serotonin reuptake inhibitor. It's also a full agonist at 5-HD1A, and it's an antagonist at 5-HD3 and 5-HD7. Actually, one theory is that the way vortioxetine improves cognitive function is through antagonism at 5-HD3 and 5-HD7. Okay. Now let's go to our next question. Question number four. Can you name four antidepressants that can be uh, suggested to patients who are concerned about sexual side effects with antidepressants? Now I know that you're already thinking of one of them, but we want to think of four. So if you would like, you can stop the video and See if you can think of anything else. Otherwise, let's go ahead and start talking about it. Now, the one that you guys were probably thinking of was bupropion. Now, let's analyze it a little bit together. We know that bupropion is relatively safe as far as sexual side effects is concerned. Uh, but why is that? Now, the idea is that um, theoretically, what is causing the sexual side effect is serotonin reuptake inhibition. Bupropion, as you may remember, is a dopamine and norepinephrine reuptake inhibitor. As a result, it is not going to um, block serotonin reuptake at any significant level, so that's why it is relatively safe with sexual side effects. Now, can you think of another commonly used antidepressant that does not block the reuptake of serotonin? And the answer is mirtazapine. Now again, uh, born and pride question. What is the mechanism of action of mirtazapine? It's an alpha-2 blocker. Yeah. So what does that alpha-2 blockade mean? is that if this is 
the synaptic cleft, and these are the norepinephrine here. When there is too much norepinephrine in the synaptic cleft, some of this norepinephrine comes and sits on the presynaptic alpha-2 receptor. Now, what this presynaptic alpha-2 receptor do is that it gives a message to the neuron that, hey, there's too much norepinephrine here. You need to slow it down. Now, imagine what will happen if we block this. There's no message anymore that there's too much norepinephrine here. So it will increase the amount of norepinephrine available in the synaptic cleft. As you can see, there is no serotonin reuptake inhibition here. So um, we will not have a very high risk of sexual side effects. So that uh, brings us to mirtazapine. We will, we will wrap up mirtazapine, bupropion. Uh, but we said four. How about the other two? The other two are two antidepressants that we just talked about today. Velazodone and vortioxetine. Now, if you remember, these two did block the reuptake of serotonin. So it is not the case that they don't cause any sexual side effects. No, they do. But it's at a lower rate than the other antidepressants. Now, why is that? Um, one of the theories is that 5-HT1A has something to do with the sexual side effects. And if you remember, these two both had effects on 5-HT1A receptors. So theoretically, that may be why these two medications have a lower risk of sexual side effects compared to the rest of the antidepressants. Uh, in fact, there was a recent study that looked at uh, 400 patients uh, who were switched from other antidepressants to either vortioxetine or acetalopram. And they showed that those who were switched to vortioxetine uh, had an improvement in sexual uh, dysfunction that was treatment emergent. Uh, I'm going to put the reference for that study here as well. So it seems like these two can be options that you can consider if you have a patient who is concerned about sexual side effects with antidepressants. So that brings us to question number five. Um, I thought that it might be helpful in question number five to just compare the mechanisms of action of the um, serotonin modulators that we talked about. Now, a lot of times the medication that is called a serotonin modulator uh, is uh, vortioxetine only because uh, of what you guys are gonna see here. I'm trying something new. Uh, I'm going to put a table here and uh, make a list of all of the medications. As you can see in this table, um, vortioxetine uh, not only affects um, serotonin at one or two sites, but at many different sites. So the idea is that this is a serotonin modulator. It affects many different receptors. Um, people do refer to trazodone and vilazodone with names such as serotonin antagonist and reuptake inhibitor for trazodone and serotonin partial agonist and reuptake inhibitor for vilazodone. That to me, these are just um, very long and I like to simplify things. Uh, so I just like to put all of them in the same group because they affect serotonin in more than one way. And that kind of helps uh, me organize um, my thought and the way I think about these three uh, medications. Um, so you can look at the table. Uh, why is it important to know the mechanisms of action? Uh, so one reason uh, may be because they ask these questions in the exam. The other reason may be because there are some um, clinical implications. So for example, as we talked about, 5-HT3 and 5-HT7 antagonism for vortioxetine is um, theorized to be the reason for its cognitive uh, benefits. Uh, we did talk about 5-HT1A and uh, how it has been associated with sexual side effects and how the effects of vortioxetine and velazodone on 5-HT1A may potentially be the reason that they have lower sexual side effects. Um, that's pretty much it. I hope that you had a very good day and 